Hello and welcome to another video in the Ionic school and in this video I'm gonna teach you something which a lot of people ask me on Udemy and it is about charts. People wanna know how we can create charts in our Ionic applications. So that is what we are going to do today. We are going to learn how we can create charts in our Ionic applications. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new Ionic 2 application and then I'm going to use the high charts library, which is a very comprehensive library and contains a lot of tools to build thousands of kinds of charts that you can build for your applications. All you have to do is just use the correct methods and options and you get your charts the way you want them to be. So high charts has a module called high charts, which you can install via NPM and you know that we can install npm modules in ionic 2 but using the native high charts module is a little bit tricky so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use an angular 2 module which is called angular 2 high charts which makes the process a little bit easier so first of all let's just create a new ionic 2 application okay so now my application has been created so i'll just cd into my project directory so the name of my project directory is high chart so i'll just open that and i'm going to open this folder in visual studio code before doing anything else i'm just going to open the console in visual studio code and i'm just going to close this command prompt and i'm just going to use this terminal now so i'm just going to run this app Now I have my app running on the right side and I have Visual Studio Code open on the left side. And the first thing that I'm going to do is install the Angular 2 High Charts module. So I'll just type in npm install Angular 2 High Charts, hit enter. And this will just install this module. And along with Angular 2 High Charts module, it will also install the High Charts module, which is a dependency on which Angular 2 High Charts module depends. So basically Angular 2 high charts module is a wrapper around the core high charts module which helps us to use high charts module in Angular 2 and Ionic 2 uses Angular 2 that is why we are going to use this module. Make sense? Okay. Now that we have installed a new module the first thing that we'll have to do is introduce it to our app.module.ts file. So the first thing that I'll do is import this module and I'll tell you in a moment what we want to import and I want to import it from Angular 2 high charts. Okay, so I want to import the chart module from Angular 2 high charts module. Okay, and along with that, I want to import everything as high charts. You can type in however you want. This is just the local name, so you can type in however you want from high charts. Okay, make sure the H here is capital because we are referencing an external NPM module here. Okay, and now in the imports, I'll have to pass in chart module dot for root and inside the for root function, I'll have to pass in the local variable called high charts that we have created right here. Okay, now just save it. And now we can close app.module.ts file. Our high charts module has been imported successfully now. And now let's just go to our main page, which is our home.html and remove everything from this page. Okay, I'm going to save it and see if the application changes in the browser. Yes, it does. Okay, and now here I'm going to create a new chart element. Okay, and this will have an options property that we are going to assign to a local variable that we'll create in just a moment. Let's just call it chart options. Okay. And along with chart options, I am also going to specify a type and the type will be chart. Let's just leave it right here. Before proceeding, let's just bind our options property to the chart options object. Okay, now we can come to our home.ts file. And here, I'm just going to create this chart options object. This will be of the type any. And in my constructor, what I'm going to do, I'm going to assign some values to this chart options. Okay, now if I save it, okay, so I made a mistake here. I have to close this square bracket. I'm going to save it. 
and this will bind this options property to this chart options object that we have created here in our TS file. Okay, so all the errors go away and our application is blank again. All I have to do is assign some values to this chart options object. So let's just do that and I'm just gonna copy this thing. Okay, I'm gonna explain you what this is in just a moment. So I'm just gonna paste it and I'm gonna save it. Let's see how our application changes in the browser. Okay, so we get a nice looking chart. This is the chart looks pretty decent. And let's just have a look at what we have done here. We have created a chart options object and this chart options object is everything for our chart. This defines everything that designs or creates or specifies how our chart is going to look like. So this chart options object contains a lot of JSON objects. The first one is the chart object which defines the type of the chart. This is the bar chart. We can change the type of the chart to line and I'll save it and this will change the type of the chart to line. Okay, so you can see that the type of the chart has changed. I can also pass in spline here and this will change the type of the chart to spline. So there are a number of chart types that you can check out here in the official documentation. Okay. So if you go to high chart demos, you'll see that they offer quite a number of charts that you can use right out of the box. All you have to do is create specific JSON objects for chart options. Let's come back to our application here. Let's just keep the bar chart for now. Another object is the title, which defines the title of our chart, which we have here as fruit consumption. So basically we are specifying the text for our title which is fruit consumption. You can also specify other attributes like you can specify the style of how your title is going to look like. So let's just try modifying this color. I'm going to save it and as soon as I save the color of the title has been changed to red. Similarly you can specify a subtitle. All you have to do is just replicate the title property and change it to subtitle and specify a text and style if you want and the subtitle will appear just below the title in a smaller font. The next important properties that we have here are the x axis and the y axis. So on x axis I'm gonna have three categories. So basically we have three categories apples, bananas and oranges. So we are gonna specify data for these three categories. Okay, so this is the x axis due to styling of high charts. We are seeing x axis on the y axis. So our x axis is represented vertically here, but basically, this is the x axis, and apples, bananas, and oranges are three values which are represented on the x axis. On the y axis, we have the title of fruits eaten, and we have a series object after that. This is the core data that our chart represents. We have a series object which is basically a JSON array and it contains two series. The first one is with the name Jane and the second one is with the name John. The name is pretty clear. We have a name for each series and this data is what our graph is representing. Okay, so data is an array which contains numerical values and it contains as many numerical values as many categories we have, right? So we have three categories. That is why we have three numerical values represented in our data array. So one here represents the number of fruits eaten by Jane and the fruit is apple. Okay, zero here represents the number of bananas eaten by Jane. Similarly, seven here represents the number of bananas eaten by John. Three here represents the number of oranges eaten by John. Similarly, I can just copy and paste it here and just change the name. I'm gonna save it and we'll have new series in our chart. Okay, so you can see that a new green series is there in our chart now. I'm just gonna replace the zero values with some values. I'm gonna save it again. Okay, so now we have three bars for each of our categories. Okay, so this is how we represent data in our charts. For each kind of chart, the data might be a little different, but for most of the basic charts, all you have to do is specify a name and data, and that's it. I am specifying this data statically here. You can use dynamic objects, dynamic arrays and then pass them in here and your chart will update in real time. One last thing that I want to do here is make our chart look even better. So as of now, the chart is overflowing our viewport. 
it is passing beyond the right edge of our application. So I'm just going to specify a style here and I'm going to specify a CSS style which is going to be display and I'll set the display to block. That's it. I'm going to save it and now we'll have a nice looking chart that fits into the viewport of our application. Okay. And this is how we can create basic charts using high charts in our Ionic 2 applications. There are a number of other chart types and different methods that you can use to improvise how your charts are going to look like. If you want to check out some new properties or some new features and implement them, you can search them here and then you will get to know how to use those properties. If you want to learn how to implement different types of charts, the high charts documentation is pretty good. So you can search anything that you want to do here and then you can you will find the documentation and you can use it right away in your Ionic 2 application. So that's it for this video. I'm going to see you in the next video with another interesting topic. Thank you.